Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're diving into a brand new series I'd like to start doing on the channel called The Final 48, where we do our very best to dive into and cover everything that's been released, all content available on various projects that are nearing the 48 hour mark on Kickstarter or GameFound. Today, we're looking at On Mars Alien Invasion by Eagle Griffin Games. And I thought it'd be an appropriate one to dive into. Not only does it have a lot of current support and eyes on it, but it's also on a game that I am already familiar with. We've done coverage of On Mars already, and so I've dipped into the Kickstarter page here, explored some of the modules, and I want to talk to you, talk with you about them. The core concept of this video is I personally don't read all the updates. I don't keep an eye on every single Kickstarter I'm involved with. I lose track of what uh, stretch goals or products that are available have been made available, what different uh, sort of community activation things have been unlocked throughout the course of the campaign. And so by the time something's finished, I find that I missed backing something or uh, I find that I, I missed a lot of story and elements. It's just a good refresher. For those of you that are already supporting the campaign, it's a good dive back into what has been covered. A lot of Kickstarters I back at the very front end and hope that throughout the course of it, through the extras and additions, we get to a point where it is sort of a little bit more close to what I want to spend on the project or some of the things I'm looking for either have or haven't been released. So for those of you that already are backing, let's hang out, let's have a conversation, let's look at the project, see where it is right now, what's going to be made available to you in the pledge manager, and see if this is something you want to continue supporting. You've got 48 hours to decide. And for those of you that need the reminder or the push or the shove and don't want to go through and read the updates yourself, that's part of what this video series is. I'll go through, I'll do the research and give you all the information that I'm able to so that you can make a final decision on your Kickstarter budget or purchases. So On Mars by Eagle Griffin Games, uh, Alien Invasion is not going to be standalone. Instead, this is going to be an expansion for the core On Mars system, which is a Euro-style game uh, where you're going to be modulating or controlling two different uh, sectors or two different parts of this kind of galactic ecosystem. You're going to be developing the land in front of you, and then you're also going to be going up to your spaceship uh, to take actions up there that are going to generate resources. You have to make a really crucial decision between when you go back into space and when you come back onto the land. There's different actions you can take in each location and kind of the sway back and forth is going to be pretty intense. Uh, this is a heavier game. It is a ambitious game. It's a game that was received and loved by a lot of people in the community, myself included. And Alien Invasion is going to introduce four separate modules four different either campaign arcs and ways to play in a little mini chapter book or four standalone scenario guides or events that you can interact with. So it's got two ways to approach it. If you have a core gaming group, this will be great. It'll be a four-part series, kind of like Rise of Fenris for Scythe, uh, where you have a little bit of a narrative. It freshens up and, and reinvents the challenge that you're being approached with. Or if you have a standalone group or you're a solo player, this is going to give modules for every style of play head-to-head -head combat, cooperative mode, and a brand new solo module at the very end. So let's dive into let's dive into this Kickstarter page. So I have it pulled up here. I figured this would be the way to do it. I was debating like printing everything out. I decided that did not work as effectively. So we've got the artwork on the cover there. The game overview. Uh, so On Mars Alien Invasion is the much anticipated cooperative expansion to Vitella Serta's best-selling, highly rated on Mars. I don't need to read all the, the ad stuff there, I suppose. Uh, I don't really do too many of these kind of overview of Kickstarter page videos. This is, this is new for me. Um, I want to get down here to the chapters. So here are the chapters you're going to be playing through if you're curious if this is going to fit your play style. So Invasion is going to be one verse many, one verse two to four players. This will be a brand new style of gameplay where the aliens are actually going to be coming down onto the planet and you're doing your very best as a team to hold them back. This introduced in a Euro style system has me very, very intrigued. Uh, it's something that I haven't seen done in uh, a Lacerda game before. I could be mistaken on that, but I like this type of module. I think this might be one of the more standard ways that I approach the game uh, if I'm playing with a larger group of people. Next chapter is going to be Outbreak. This is two to four players. This is a cooperative scenario where you're doing your very best to work together to find out why a sickness is spreading across the planet due to, of course, the aliens showing up and the invaders kind of 
coming into the area. Uh, this will be interesting. I don't always love cooperative modes, so this might be a module that I play in the whole scenario. I don't know if I dip back into this. Uh, unless, you know, I have people that really want to play cooperative, I don't see that mode replacing the way that I approach the game. We have chapter three, Blackout. This is going to be for two to four players as well. This is also going to be a cooperative scenario that's going to focus on suspicious power outages across the planet. You're going to do your very best to repair buildings by a certain time frame, and this is going to be crucial because uh, if you don't, you complete your objectives, the whole colony will go dark. The object of this is really a puzzle-solving game, as far as I can tell. We're doing your very best to complete different uh, resource requirements and generate certain abilities uh, before a certain amount of time runs out. And then finally, we have Monolith. Monolith is going to be a slow, solo-slash-group co-op. Uh, this is really going to introduce the brand new solo mode that I was talking about and continue that story. Here you're going to try to compete four out of five unique goals in just 15 rounds. So there's a timer on this. Uh, you have only a certain amount of, of rounds in order to try to complete your objective. And this is more of like an intense solo puzzle or a cooperative mode if everyone wants to work together and approach it. I really see this as a solo approach to the game. Out of those four modules, I'm interested in playing them collectively as a group, but I don't all, always get on Mars the table as often. Instead, for me, invasion is really the thing that's sparking my interest. Now, if you're a solo or co-op co gamer, there's going to be a lot more in here that should be drawing your attention. But for me, invasion and then monolith are the two that I'm paying attention to. The middle co-op modes will probably be fun one-off experiences, but I probably won't live with them, right? I probably won't stick with them permanently. Continuing to scroll down, uh, the expansion itself is going to be around $50. Uh, I'm not going to go into pricing and, and sort of where I think value lies. Board Game Co. already does that uh, immensely well. So as far as the components, Eagle Griffin Games, uh, you can swear by their components. They always put out super high quality uh, pieces and they always have good customer support based off my experience. They're going to have a, a two-piece insert, a beacon promo card, uh, and you have the draft rulebook available if you wanted to check this out. So... We also have additional buys. You could get heat transferred wooden alien action tokens for six extra dollars. I honestly would do that. I think that's a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, on Mars, in terms of the Kickstarter copy, is going to be super high production quality. If you're going to be playing with the alien components, you might as well have you know the extra few dollars spent on those. Uh, additional copies of On Mars, additional copies of uh, the expansion. And more interestingly, or more importantly, to those of you that uh, like... I can't zoom on this page. Interesting. To those of you that like Eagle Griffin Games, they're also going to have all of... This is something that they do during their Kickstarters. They're going to have all of the deluxe versions of their other games available to you at genuinely some of the best prices that you'll ever find them. These are high-end Kickstarter, you know, ridiculous things. It could be worth backing just to get access to the Pledge Manager. If you want something like Kanban EV, Escape Plan, Veenhost, uh, Libosa, or The Gallerist, or Rococo. Uh, out of these, the games that I've played, I've played Kanban EV, Escape Plan, Rococo, On Mars, Makata de Libosa, Fleet the Dice System, if I was going to encourage anyone to kind of continue growing their collection, I would direct you towards Rococo. It's probably one of the best. Uh, it's probably one of the best games out of their set so far. I absolutely love uh, sort of the worker placement, deck building, kind of deck crafting uh, system that's introduced there. So this is probably going to be the best deal. Best deal you can get for some of these components. So that's going to be this expansion. That's really what they're going for. Uh, on Mars Alien Expansion. I'm going to back out here, and you can see big back this project. I logged into a separate account on my iPad here, so none of the projects I cover uh, should indicate uh, if I have backed them and at what level I have backed them. So, let's see here. Updates. Uh, another... So, I wanted to touch in here. So, that's the overview for those of you that are curious, but the part that I think a lot of people haven't paid attention to because I don't see as many hearts on this as it should have is going to be the story. So uh, I'm going to spend some time reading some flavor text, walking you through a little bit of the narrative of the game because I appreciate those type of things. If you haven't taken the time to read it, you know, set me down, go wash the dishes, le listen to the story a little bit, get excited about On Mars. Uh, and let's dive in. If you like this style of video, leave a comment down below as well. 
more of a relaxed kind of approach to Kickstarter projects, their updates, any information I can share along the way. They have released the pricing guideline, by the way, for anyone that's looking at picking up any of those other games. Uh, an important note, they released it in one of these updates here, and so uh, I'll go over that as well. So, chapter one story. Operations are finally running smoothly on the Red Planet. The colony is well established with shelters for the frail humans supplied with freshly reclaimed condensed oxygen. Our dietary needs are met completely planet side with greenhouses, which also help the oxygen supply, actually fresh this time. Raw materials come from the mines powered by our very own power generators. It is the human dream. Reach out and touch another planet. Stick a flag in it and call it our own, except this is none, this is none of that simple sci-fi business of pulling up a moving truck to a class M planet and moving in the next day. We had to build all that stuff with, all, with our trip after trip between surface and orbit. The UN, United Nations, finally managed to get the majority of not only humanity, that is the easy part, but humanity's leaders behind the project when they created DOME, Department of Operations on Mars Exploration. I just love acronyms. For once, just about every pocket of humanity tried this new tech technique called cooperation, and at least they engaged at least they engaged in this once the debate about terraforming versus sheltering got involved. Really, it was no competition. Sure, at first there was plenty of people with fiction-fueled fantasies of rendering the Martian surface and atmosphere into a cute little Earth, but we just don't have the science to make that happen anytime soon, or even make that or or even to to make it start anytime soon. I wonder if that's a that's a jab at terraforming Mars versus on Mars. I'd be curious. Mars doesn't have a sufficiently magnetic personality to generate any worthwhile atmosphere that it can keep safe from blistering radiation coming from the yellow star at the heart of the centrifuge we call the solar system. So once the notion of terraforming was vivisificated and put into jars of formal formaldehyde for later study, Dome had created a lens of, to focus Earthlings on one goal, and Dome itself acted as the cornea, protecting our unified vision from the dust and floats foam that inevitably comes up in a society of so many billions of withful individuals and even more withful, willful groups of individuals. To err is human, but if you gather a group of humans, you can really make your mark on history with some memorable mistakes. As hard as mastering a mission to, to move onto Mars was, Dome's real success was wiggling fresh toys in front of the society's cat-like attention to keep our eyes on the prize long enough for us to follow in the footsteps. Well, okay, rover tracks of our robotic pioneers. The funny thing about science fiction is how prophetic it ends up seeming to be. So much real science progresses and discoveries have seeded, have seeded its inspiration in science fiction. And when disaster inevitably comes calling, some Ray Bradbury or Octavia Butler has already told us a story about how, to, how a cataclysm rather like it. The nuances are where the surprise comes from. How many sci-fi tales are built on Earth's diverse cultures finally becoming unified because of a common threat, an invader from outside, or all the weird ways in which we make first contact, and how those initial communications are established and deciphered? This is true, true, especially in movies and television, where conveniently the aliens already speak the language in which the story was filmed, and even bothering to have some gibberish with captions at the bottom. It wasn't quite that simple. But the message we received from aliens had enough content and clear enough intent that our best linguists were able to figure out it in time to prepare, at least a little bit anyway. I don't know, maybe the aliens really did consume our media because I could swear the elements of their message echoed the themes of successful stories of millennia past. Without question, the gist of the transmission was pretty clear. Humans cannot be allowed to spread throughout the galaxy. This human, virus, cancer, is magalignic and only pro propagates to destroy its environment. Humans must remain in their own planet to preserve the rest of life in the galaxy. What a hammer drop. We humans are some kind of infection to be quelled or malignant growth to be trimmed? Okay, maybe there's some truth to that, but humans are not well known for going down without a fight, and Dome and the rest of us have invested far too much and have worked way too hard to get removed like some kind, kind of skin tag. So... That is going to be the overview of chapter one, setting up the narrative, uh, setting up the idea of uh, what's happening here. I got to say, I'm intrigued, although it felt a little bit more like a science fiction paper, 
uh, or kind of like a, a theoretical piece of writing. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Pledge manager pricing. So right now it looks like they're offering 10% off on nearly everything. Now MSRP did raise and they did acknowledge that. That's partially due to the shipping crisis and just the cost of production overall right now. So everything is more expensive than it would have been a year or two ago. I think that's a trend that's going to continue to happen. Uh, if there's any of these games that you really, really wanted, I might look into getting them now. Rococo Deluxe for 108, you know, and if you get a deal on shipping, I'd be curious about that. Again, Board Game Co. covers all of that much more effectively than me. But all these, in update number four, all of those prices are available. So if you want to know what you're going to be, be able to purchase and at what price you can purchase it before you're in the Pledge Manager, all of that is right here. And then we have Chapter 2 Story. And this will be the last part of the video. So I'm going to read Chapter 2 Story. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying this new series of videos. The plan is to kind of keep track of and update, especially on campaigns that have a lot of stuff hitting the table and kind of a lot of brand new information coming to you throughout expansions and updates. It's hard to keep track of it all. I know I struggle keeping track of it all. And so I figure if I can do an update video that kind of helps you all walk through it while I do the research myself, it would not be a bad thing to do. Chapter 2 Story. After the thrill of feeding off, fending off the invaders had worn off, so we won, we became aware of what could be constructed as a faint dis distress, con construed as a faint distress signal. If I could only read. Curiosity fueled by confidence that we had eliminated any dangers foreign to Mars, beside classic human incompetence, led us to the burial site of a small satellite. It had fallen deep into the red strands and may have, may, and may have lain there for eternity. It was buried deeply, deep enough that its entry wound hadn't caught the attention of a myriad, myriad of astronomers, exoplanet aficionados, or even the best pattern recognition algorithms. You had to be close enough to hear its faint whimpering. Once we dug it up and could see the satellite within our own eyes, with our own eyes, our first thought was to check the missing satellite's poster at the colony post office, or at least do the computer equivalent. The mystery started to mount when we couldn't find any record of a satellite's path over this quadrangle, at least not any that had gone AO AOW, uh, AWOL. The debate Experts even did some lateral thinking and tried searching for a wayward satellite launched launches from either planet, thinking maybe this one had never established a proper orbit. Maybe it was my high school biology talking, but I suggested that sometimes you have to dissect to learn, or perhaps I'd read too many mysteries that hinged on autopsies. First note, any distinguishing marks of the patient. No identifying marks other than the faded and discolored logo, Scoop XI. It wasn't even clear how old the thing was or what origin it had. It was recent enough to have been from one of the private space travel companies, or was it ancient enough to be from one of the old national space agencies? Time to make the first incision. It was surprisingly empty. No black box. It's never easy. All of the internal systems had been co corroded to near dust over time. The only thing inside that appeared intact was a small capsule. We were determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, so we detached the capsule from the emancipated supports that were barely holding onto it. With so many eyes on this object, I'm not sure how it took so long for our collective consciousness to put the facts together. Our standard ISO 710 biohazard logo and a breach of the capsule. Glances darted about, but we quickly agreed that negligible atmosphere, our suits, and the incredible amount of time that clearly had passed were sufficient for us to dismiss any concerns about this. So we instructed the rovers we'd brought to collect and store the salvage for farther analysis. Back at the lab, forensics of the, of the residue showed that all of the... Uh, that all of the ablated contents inside of the satellite were made of organic plastics and polymers. In fact, the erosive pattern suggested that the ablation had occurred quickly, emanating from the capsule breach. Too late. We realized that our attitude about the quarantine of potential hazardous biological material had been far too cavalier and that there could be still some risk. We broke through the shell of the shame that enveloped us in an instant and hastily ordered emergency decontamination of the facility. We were left to hope that whatever this was couldn't have survived on Mars, and that the instrument still left it susceptible to br brutality, brisk Martian winters, so it would pose no farther hazard to us. It really requires human hubris to start an epidemic on a new planet. A number of colonists are now suffering from a devastating form of hypercongulation, and the doctors say this is previously unknown disease. 
Anticongulation meds have been administered, but the symptoms persist even to the last in every last patient. Primarily, primary analysis of the blood samples hasn't identified a pathogen, but the tight contagion of the etherokitis, red blood cells, uh, sorry, I get carried away, suggests a culprit is virus-sized or even smaller, some subviral agent, maybe a prion? No matter. We are currently scouring the patient's medical histories, background information, and even personal logs to find the source of this syndrome. As the patient count rises at an alarming rate, we need to figure out what this is. Could it actually be what it was in the bio, whatever it was in the biohead, biohazard capsule? If we don't find a pathogen, and more importantly, a cure soon, Dome's return on investment in this colony is going to be a big goose egg. So, there you are, chapter two, an overview and a final forty-eight warning of on Mars alien invasion. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this. If you made it to this point, leave a quack down below. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. I'll see you next time. Thank you.